The words that follow from our Ephesians reading today tell us that the gifts that Jesus gave were some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry. Last Saturday, I went to see the movie, Won't You Be My Neighbor, about the late Fred Rogers. I was mesmerized by this man's story, which encapsulated all of those gifts and qualities in which Paul wrote to the Ephesians. Fred's focus on a message for children was incredible during this new era of TV. A vessel that could reach thousands of individuals, but yet Fred focused on speaking to them on a one-on-one -on -one basis so that they could understand the valuable lessons that were being shared with them about how to love themselves in order to go out and to love their neighbors. Now, using TV to minister was seen as an absurd thought by many at first. They thought that TV was just for entertainment and news, instead of using it to equip the youngest saints for a life of neighborly love. Ministry cannot begin unless there is a desire for neighborly love first. And the greatest gift which Fred obtained, and for us as followers of Jesus, we're all commanded to do, and that is to carry out a love for our neighbor through that task that is so basic and yet so difficult to obtain. That skill set of listening. To listen to what is taking place in the world around us and to respond in love to our neighbor. It is in listening that we discern whether the actions reveal a love for our neighbor or just simply a love for ourselves. On Friday, I returned from a week of mission work with eight of our youth and two leaders from our church. We went to Charleston, West Virginia, and one of the greatest gifts for me was allowing time and space to listen to our youth and all those who were part of it. And our youth were absolutely incredible. Their willingness to get up and to share with each other as they wrestled with the walks that they had taken into a very different world where people's lives seemed very uncomfortable to us. We all dove into our day with scripture, helping us to make those connections between what we were experiencing in our life and the Savior who has called us all to go out and to care for one another. And as Jesus said to the disciples in John today, Jesus always says to us, I am the bread of life. And we can only know our neighbor through the one who calls us to the importance of loving each other. For no neighbor was ever forgotten with Jesus. Every neighbor is an invitation to offer the bread of life to them, an expression of love that we're commanded to share. On the last night of Jesus' life, after he broke bread with his disciples, giving us the Eucharistic example we follow each Sunday, he took a towel and placed it over his shoulder and began to wash his disciples' feet. On our last night of the mission trip, the leaders of the week washed the feet of us adult leaders, and then we, in turn, washed the feet of the youth and then had a prayer together. That act of connection, to clean the dirt of the world off of the feet that had carried us into new neighborhoods where we made new relationships. And after that act, we reflected together as a group 
And I was drawn back to the most compelling moment in that film about Fred Rogers. It was an episode when he invited his neighbor to come and sit beside him outside and to cool his feet off. Fred had a small little baby pool and he had taken his shoes off and put them into the water. And so the scene is Fred, this white man with his neighbor, a black man, with their shoes off and their feet in the water to cool off as the news on the TV screens around our country were those images of people yelling at the blacks to get out of their pools. That hateful racism against neighbor sharing water on a hot day would be on one station. And on the other station would be Fred, immediately teaching the example of Christ by the simple act of two neighbors sharing the water together. And Fred takes the hose and asks him if he would like a little bit more water on his feet and gently sprays them and then offers them a towel to dry off his feet. This was the image that continued to live in my mind as we washed the feet of our youth and dried them off with the same towel, feeling no doubt in the world that Jesus was there. Fred was an ordained Presbyterian minister. He brought the gospel of Jesus to the hearts of children, teaching them lessons of life. He was ever conscious of this usage of television to help children grow into the young people we all want for our children to become but realize that we do not naturally allow those gifts to come outside of our beings in order to show them the way, especially when the contemporary world around us is showing us hatred and violence against each other. We don't know how to navigate it. But Fred offered the children a way in the comforts of their homes to leave their home and to go out into a type of mission field. Seeing all the trouble that they were hearing about from their parents to give them a context in which to process. Understanding that the purpose of going out into the mission field is to return changed. To have a new understanding of how we can love our neighbors to have an understanding that others have greater hardships that we never can fathom. And that we might go into the mission field thinking that we are feeding them only to discover how much that they have fed us beyond all belief. And it's in that discovery that exhibits that there is spiritual maturity taking place. As Paul continues in this letter to the Ephesians, we must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery. But we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body promotes the body's growth in building itself up. In love. Our growth comes from listening. It's today's epistle that leads us into the mission statement that we hold on to as a church, equipping the saints for the work of ministry. So I offer this quote from Fred in closing today. Knowing that we can be loved exactly as we are gives us all the best opportunity for growing into the healthiest of people. Who do we need to go out into this week ahead and listen to? What is the mission field that God wants us 
to receive that bread of life again. Because God wants us to grow. And to the spiritual beings that only God knows we can become, not by ourselves, but learning from each other and the richness of God's kingdom that is out there for us to discover. Amen.